th then I think Paula, we can start. So a very warm sure. welcome to our to our session. It's an open space session, which means that uh, you will have the opportunity to um, to contribute quite actively through a task also, which we will announce. But uh, here, just very briefly, what this is about. It's about co-creating open picture books for learning assessment and research in higher education. And we have uh, added to our title here, uh, is this a wild idea? And I think uh, you will understand uh, what we mean by this um, when we talk. My name is Christina Ranzi and I'm an academic developer at Manchester Metropolitan University. And I have with me Paula today, Paula. <laughs> Yay. Hi everyone, ciao, I'm Paola Corti, I am from Italy and I work at Politecnico di Milano uh, here in Italy and at Spark Europe as Open Education Community Manager with the, the European Network of Open Education Librarians. So welcome everyone to this session. I think that we can move ahead, Chrissy, right, to the next picture, to the next diapo. <laughs> Uh, so the plan for today is to have a brief overview of uh, the experience that we had uh, designing, co-designing uh, at a distance during the pandemic, this open picture book that is called Together. We did it with great colleagues and we are going to list them in a moment. But then we are going to open the space um, to small group discussions because we want to ask you if you think that uh, uh, collaborative open picture books can be a great tool for learning, teaching and assessment in higher education. So we would like you to share your ideas with us if you are on board with it. <laughs> Perfect. So the book that Paula just said we created was um, done in, in collaboration with, with colleagues from around the world based on a GoGN uh, fellowship. As you know, I, I am a penguin and I know we have loads of penguins here in the session today, which is lovely. So we created together um, based on that fellowship and you can see all collaborators uh, on the slides here and uh, where they are based. Okay, well, maybe it's good to say that uh, we focused on SDG4, quality education for all, and uh, the collaborative uh, picture book that we created together talks about the values of open education mainly. And we've been working uh, through uh, October 2020 till March 2021 uh from all over the places uh, gino franzman from south africa ellen pulker from uk verena roberts from canada brian mathers uh, who helped us largely with the, the design uh, of the graphics uh, from uh, the uk and uh, penny bentley from uh, australia uh, i am from italy you know me uh, chrissy uh, from greece but actually staying in the uk and then Odi frank and nasi frank who are quite strongly related to chrissy i would say chrissy <laughs> <laughs> yes these are my boys i was very lucky to bring them in so it became a family project um yes. okay great so uh, what we wanted to do is to um, to work on a picture book that models the use of open education resources um, the, the, and the reuse of open education resources, but maybe also of, of stories that um, are not intended to be uh, or have been published as open education resources. So we took snippets from different stories and uh, illustrations from uh, the Rijksmuseum um, from ex exhibits from the Rijksmuseum that we use that are made available under open licenses and uh, created the, um, on the right hand side the, the visuals and what we say here on the left hand side then the story. The story was also informed by a survey we, we shared with colleagues uh, the wider open education community and uh, that informed a what the story was about that brought out the, the values of open education, but also the animals uh, that you see here on, on the right hand side. So on the left hand side here of this uh, slide, you see the, um, the exhibits from the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam that we use details of um, that are that can be found again uh, on the right hand side. So, so maybe it, it could be actually a game, isn't it, to find what uh, is where uh, on the left hand side and then find it again in, in the final scene that we have uh, added here. 
Uh, when we worked together with people around the world in order to understand uh, how to work on how to design the picture book, we asked, as Chrissy just said, uh, for feedback about which animals would represent the values of open education at best, like uh, heroes, antagonists, and then we chose the the animals that were listed in both on both sides because we wanted to stress somehow with our choices that uh, uh, open education is really open to all and uh, all of us as animals, as any human being, but also. Uh, let's say, existing being uh, in the most inclusive way possible have all sides in ourselves and it's a choice where which values to to work for. And uh, even if the, the story is very short and do, does have just uh, 154 words and 15 illustrations, then we worked quite largely writing about uh, the process we went through, the practice and uh, you see how many words uh, were in our blog post and in the fellowship report uh, that uh, Chrissy mainly prepared with our collaboration. But then we spread the word about the, the intention to have different translations of the of the story. On a volunteer basis, we now have more than 20 languages available. And uh, in the, there are Google Slides formats also with uh, multiple languages at the same time, which was a quite an interesting experiment for us. Yes, so uh, by picture books. Um, I mean, I, I personally have a, um, an in, a genuine interest in picture books. I also write on my own picture book stories and I, I love to illustrate. But picture books, um, what we know about them, they're often for non-readers even. They are written for people who can't, can't yet read. So they are read by, by parents or carers or, or all, all the um, individuals to engage um, young children often in, in storytelling and let their imagination uh, fly. Um, they engage people also in an emotional way um, through um, creating uh, stories and, and characters where we can jump in and, and be that person. Um, that happens in combination with, with text uh, and images. And that's really powerful and can empower children here, uh, as you can see on the slide. But because they are uh, written in a way where they bring together different age groups. They are cross-generational and there's huge potential. And while often picture books are written for children, for young children, five to eight often, uh, or younger even, they are uh, quite attractive also for, for adults and we find a lot of meanings uh, in there and, and deep concepts that uh, speak across the ages. Um, and there are picture books that have been developed in the last few years especially, that are especially um, for adults. Um, okay, I think we can move on. <clears throat> so what we have done is, because after the project, we have felt hmm, there is more potential here. Yes, we all came together. Yes, we all found it useful. And uh, we, uh, we created something that we use in our practice, many of us. Uh, we felt that there is potential to explore the picture book a bit further. And Paula and I have been uh, writing um, a chapter for, for a book publication on how we, can, we could be using uh, picture books more widely, collaborative picture books, and open uh, in higher education for learning and teaching, as it says here. Our, our literature review revealed very little uh, it, that is out there beyond what is used uh, in art and design uh, or in creative writing courses. So we felt that there is a huge potential there uh, for, co for the co-creation of open picture books in learning, teaching and assessment and also research. So what we have done here today, and we hope that you will uh, engage uh, with this task in small groups is to enable you to explore that possibility and discuss it um, with colleagues as well. Hi, Antonio. <laughs> so Hello. Let's start Hello. With Good the... morning. Hi, Antonio. Wow. Morning. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Sorry, I'm so, late. 
sorry I'm late. No worries. That's okay. we ju we're just starting with the active part, actually. So okay, you're perfectly fantastic. in time. Fantastic. So uh, the resource park we are providing now, and I'm copying here the link to the, to the um, oh, sorry, I moved the slide too early. Uh, it, it consists of many different resources. First of all, our uh, uh, research um, picture book, and here in the chat, the link to it. And then we have uh, uh, the second resource that is a doodle fun. And uh, you can find it here. Let me copy and paste the link so that it's handy for all of you. And then we are, so this doodle fun was created by one of uh, uh, Chris's uh, uh, sons actually. And uh, this is done for you to quickly recreate or play with the images and with the elements that we created ourselves, uh, choosing the, 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 the background and adding your words in your languages very easily and very quickly, which is helpful if you think that uh, we wanted to be open to all and not not all of us in the group also had a, a graphic experience or specific, uh, uh, let's say, um, creative uh, uh, skills. And then the third resource is uh, the Story Weaver that uh, uh, is a, a wonderful resource that uh, is full of stories created by teachers together with the students, all ages and uh, it's based on images mainly. So it's very close to picture books. And uh, this is a very interesting resource on, um, in our idea. So the task is to explore in small groups uh, ideas if and how collaborative open picture books activities could be of value for learning and teaching. Please feel free to explore any kind of possibility. Um, I'm not willing to give you any example because me and Chrissy won't, uh, are not willing to uh, somehow influence you, but if you have questions, we are here and it would be great uh, if uh, we can, um, if we can now be divided into small groups. So I would ask for the support of our great uh, ALT uh, uh, Support oh, here in the room, that. Emma. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to start transferring everyone to a room. I'm going to keep some of you in the main room and move some of you to another room so that we can still have have people talking during the recording. So bear with me while okay. you move around. Right. We can we so, can keep one group here even. Yes. Yep. And Thank also, you. if anyone. Oops. Paula. Um, I'm sorry, Chrissy. I believe Paula has been pushed to the other room because I'd already started okay. the transfer. Apologies. Yes, that's fine. Christina, will we be able to move between the groups or not? You, you should be able to, yes. Um, so if you bear with me. I'm just updating the setting and you should be able to do that now. Right. I can't see any groups. So at the moment you're in the main main room um in the participants list you'll be able to see another group and you should be able to join that by clicking the little doors so there's one with anna antonio no participants i can't see i think um Chrissy, hello yes hello 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 i think we are a group you you are yes are we so are we're in a group now and then um Anna is in another room with with a few other people yeah Okay, so, so I, I'm working with Antonio then. And yes. with Anna. You have Antonio and, and Anna and Terumani is with us as well. Ah, Terumani as well. Okay, great. Are we all here then? Yeah, yeah. Can we all hear each other? Yeah. Feel free to turn on your videos and, and, and chat as well if you, if yeah, you would please. like to, like Antonio so, has. Apart from Anna, Chrissy and myself, who is the other person? Sorry. Uh, uh, Terumani. Oh, Terumani. Hello, Terumani. Yes, I can see you now. Perfect. So have you understood what uh, we are invited you to do? Yeah, yeah. We I have, think, we have, yes. I think there is a lot of um, application, at least in um, humanities and even languages within the humanities and social sciences. And I have a lot of possibilities, examples of tasks 
in my view, they would work better if they are perceived as authentic tasks. So one possibility, imagine that you have a module on um, gender equality in Colombia, okay? Because we teach that type of thing. So one possibility of a task for the students to use um, their creativity would be to draw a collection of pictures for a advertising campaign yeah, of a charity or of a government department. And uh, in that uh, brief, there would have to be a, a brief uh, explaining the objectives of the of the campaign um, and then you would put the students to create the assets or you could have the texts for instance for the com for the campaign and you have to get the students to create drawings and um, bring pictures and do collages I'm sorry I have missed the first part of the of the the of the of the session so that's one possibility the other is simply helping um the other one is very general uh students creating education resources for other students and for wider audiences when you engage with wider audiences um you can you can use a um, lot of uh, visuals to make your content more palatable if you're at university it's more like you you're based on text and articles etc but if you are disseminating to you know, to create educational materials, that is a perfect place for illustrations, for collages, etc. So that would apply to absolutely every single subject, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Antonio. That's really useful. We are talking about picture books. Uh, I know you, yeah. you took it a bit wider, which, which is great. So, Anna, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm still trying to absorb and just thinking from the accessibility point of view, a, a picture book is great, but if you've got a visual impairment, there's a, a bit of a problem. Um, so it's how would, you know, my question is always, how would we make it accessible to those who haven't got, you know, visual um, abilities, etc. But then again, could you make a, a picture book um, something that somebody could work on together to actually encourage people to help each other through accessibility problems. Um, yeah. So if you've got a combination of text and images which are guiding people through a story, would you therefore be actually getting somebody to tell the story regardless <coughs> of whether they are, you know, one person telling the story using the pictures and the other person telling the story using the words? It's a, yeah, it's a very good observation, Anna, and I got a solution. When I think of um, this type of pictures or this type of illustrations or images, whatever they are, there is an equivalent to it for visually impaired uh, people, which is um, literary, a literary approach. So you yeah, can have like a sort of but a literary description rather than scientific description, because the picture evokes certain senses and ser activates certain um, neural connectors in your brain. And uh, mm. you cannot replace that with a straight, you know, direct, scientific, neutral term. It has to mm. be something that creates some kind of emotion. So it could be a literary description. It could be a short poem. It could be something that activates that, that, that side same sense. Yeah, of yeah. the thinking mm. of the person mm. who is visually impaired and cannot see it. You need that mm. person to sense it. Yeah. Mm. Even if they I can't really see it. To yeah, I really love the suggestion and it's an important point you are made, like uh, as Antonio already said, you know, with the accessibility issues, but also the opportunity, the challenge presents, you know, for for collaboration and for that peer to peer support, I think. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. I think it's, it's a great, great opportunity to actually um, engender more collaboration and make people more aware of the fact that other people might not have the same abilities as them but have got mm -hmm. equally good, you know, you know, things to offer um, or, yes. you know, some interesting perspectives to offer. Um, yes, so and, and I'm it's sure about complementing, complementing each other, isn't it? And creating yeah. a mesh uh, of Always. experiences, of, of, uh, of talents also and of competencies, but also developing new ones, you know, on that mm. journey. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's really great. Yeah. So. So do you have maybe a concrete idea or a seed of an idea where you could try something like this or you would consider it? What in my mm -hmm. teaching? Yes. 
Um, for the picture book, because I missed the first part, I'm sorry, but I had family things. Yeah. For my pic, for the picture book, are we talking about pictures as in photographs? Or is it also well, designs? It can be anything. It could be drawings, like you said, collage. It could be um, we, we used um, bits that were already available, parts yeah. of uh, OER, basically, that you can reuse and adapt. Yeah. Um, you can create <coughs> new ones and mix them all together. That's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. What you mm. what you need. First of all, uh, yes, I have many ideas, too many, perhaps. So my concern <laughs> would be my concern would be also equality. And you have the answer. The answer is to create teams of uh, students who are, you know, mm, sufficiently varied, diverse in their skills. Because I can think of my students, you know, doing uh, Spanish and economics, or uh, French and Spanish, or Spanish and politics. I know them very well. Some of them, you know, may have taken a, a module in art, or may have, you know, have the right background and be good at drawing. Some others. Uh, to be honest, they, they don't even have the aesthetic sense of, you know, organizing a simple document, you know, it, it's, you know, the sense of aesthetics and how I perceive the aesthetic value of their work and how other students perceive the aesthetic value of their work. It's a massive cleavage. There is a massive yeah, gap, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to Spanish language, they all have an A level in Spanish with an A. Okay. So some of them are better writing, some of them better, but they are more or less. But when you see artistic inclination and creativity for visual, there are people who are absolutely zero, honestly. I know that we we shouldn't assume that, but they haven't been prompted. They haven't been, you know, put through the challenges. And uh, yes. that is a concern for me. So you need a varied team and you yes. need some kind of extra support, you know, um, so that, that those students can also find a creative side of it because i'm not saying that that the fact that they they are really bad at it that means that they can never be good at it of course they can yeah but there mm -hmm. are different stages they have had different preferences inclinations background etc so creating diverse teams to do these things yes Chris, thank you so anna you quickly sorry to yes, interrupt but we're just coming to the end of the session did you want me to bring everyone back into the main room because it's only okay, a I'm not, is that okay maybe you can share uh, your your idea when we all come together would that be possible yeah sure yeah. yep okay great thank you both and tirumini i hope you were uh, listening and uh, found it useful too oh it's done <laughs> you're all back <laughs> that was quick <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Paolo, we're getting very close to the end of the session, so I thought it'd be important to bring everyone back so you can do a close off and finish no your slide. No worries, no worries, because uh, we've been adding our our notes in uh, slide 17 in the shared uh, document, so... Yes. Uh, uh, we did a lot of uh, we did a lot of talk and I think we have two minutes. Maybe if we can have uh, one idea shared by each team very quickly and I'll ask Anna to start perhaps. Um, well, our conversation was mainly around accessibility for people who are visually impaired and how we could um, harness picture books to actually um, encourage collaboration between those who have different abilities to support each other through their learning. That was Great, that's sort you. of the absolute crux of it, really. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Antonio for, for a very insightful conversation. Paula? Thank you. I would thank Joe and uh, and uh, Leo for uh, their wonderful uh, their wonderful <laughs> insights. Yes, and Don't also Ripley. Ripley. And we have Ripley, uh, we who whom we named our group to. Uh, you see, our name group is uh, named Ripley, <laughs> and uh, uh, we've been discussing about uh, the context of uh, student teachers to develop uh, uh, early years resources, and also could be higher education students uh, practicing uh, science or research communication through picture book uh, medium. And the idea is to develop picture books uh, for science, math, and history in order to support uh, students collaborate to understand how to best communicate complex topics to early years audience and uh, also uh, model activity with the pre-service teachers 
that uh, could then co-create resources with young students and that this could also help work to promote understand of plural perspectives uh, on issues as well as basic understanding so uh, picture books uh, as a tool to start the conversation instead of uh, providing uh, art science uh, content uh, in a difficult uh, way to be uh, shared let's say but to start small and uh, um, engage through the main concepts and then build on this this was the idea but please joe and uh, leo complete my sentence if i was not <laughs> Thank you, Paolo. No, that was a, a, a really good summary of what we talked about, um, and it was a really, really exciting idea. I love it. I think it has great potential. Great. That's that's lovely to hear. And uh, we hope. I think we are at the end of the session now. We hope the session was useful to to trigger some new ideas, perhaps, and make connections um, also with each other that you could take forward potentially. So please do keep in touch. Uh, we are very much looking forward to hearing to um, to what the ideas sort of develop in in the near future. Hopefully, Antonio, <laughs> Anna, yeah, yeah, you know, definitely, Lee and Hiromani. And um, yeah, I mean, there is a big thing about during the pandemic. Students felt uh, alone; they had no friends. They were learning on their own. So, could picture books uh, bring students back to campus because there's that issue as well, and use that yes. space in co-creation of picture books as an example yeah beautiful that they thank then... you so much <laughs> thank you all welcome. thank you very much everybody for joining us and christina for your support thank you yeah, yeah. Thank bye -bye. everyone thanks <laughs> very interesting bye. very interesting chat and i believe a lot of people have got more conversations they'd like to have about it so feel free to share your resources on discord and carry on the conversation there mm. thank you very much yeah, thank, you. thank you thank you Thank you.